Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we follow British gamekeepers John Pyle and Jeff Garrard on an exciting double Kyle of boar hunt in Germany. Plus we catch up with Justin Garrard following in his father's footsteps on his first solo pigeon shooting foray in Essex. We're in Germany for a wild boar hunt with English gamekeepers Jeff Garrard and John Pyle ready to go behind the rifles. Our meeting place is Count Coburg's magnificent castle, an inspiration for Ian Fleming in the James Bond books, but there's no time to enjoy the surroundings as the guides are keen to get to business. Jeff and John split up with Tom, Jeff's guide for the hunt, eager to get him to the forest and into the hunting area as quickly as possible. Like you ask you, you are a professional hunter. Yeah. Um, is that problem for you from free hand to shoot? Uh, I prefer if you have you sticks. Yeah. I have a yeah. nice shooting stick. Yeah. Here. Yeah. You can use that. Okay. Lovely. Yeah. It'd be better for me. Yeah. To, to, yeah. Okay. My stick. Thank you. Yeah. Loaded up with 170 grain gecko ammunition, Jeff and Tom venture into the impressive forest. But it seems that Lady Luck is favouring John in the early stages. Yeah. <laughs> We've only been gone two or three minutes. <laughs> oh mate, this shoe is like his women, mate. He's done in three minutes. Now, even more keen to bag a Kyler, they move on. And it doesn't take long for the first boar to make an appearance. The boar population in the forest is high, but all Jeff can do is glass them from a distance with the Swarovskis. All are non-shootable animals and therefore must be left alone. One of them is a heavy Kyler, but still a very young animal. Jeff continues his footstock towards a high seat deep in the forest, and many more boar come into view, but they're mostly females and youngsters. One catches Jeff's attention and they stalk in closer to get a better look. The shot is abandoned as Tom tells Jeff that despite its healthy size, the animal is still only young and as such needs to be left alone. They finally make it to the high seat and let the area settle down after their intrusion. It doesn't take long for another sounder to come into view. The sow, leading the group, has brought her attendant family, but again, Tom can't identify a shootable beast, and the boar are allowed to move on.
Eventually the pair decide to call it a day and leave the high sea as night begins to fall. Leaving empty handed isn't made any easier by the sight of John Pyle's Kyler, which he shot just a few paces into the stalk, resulting in a lot of banter between the two British keepers. The next morning is frosty and Jeff and Tom are back out early. Today their luck seems to have changed as within minutes Tom has instructed Jeff to shoulder his rifle as he spotted something lying in the leaves. It appears to be a pig's ear peeking out of a pile of fallen beech leaves, a giveaway to an experienced forester like Tom. As the beast rises he still needs to identify it as a mature tusker. He asserts this is so just as the Kyler bolts into the trees. Jeff however follows the Kyler's progress through the forest and uses the Merkel helix to good effect, taking the shot the second the boar stops moving. It's a well executed shot under pressure but the Kyler runs on fueled by adrenaline. However he's dead on his feet and falls in the thicket a hundred yards further on. Jeff and Tom approach with caution. This Tusker could still be very dangerous but Tom soon confirms that Jeff's shot was a good one and the Kyler is definitely dead. The congratulations begin, Jeff completing the double for two keepers abroad in very fine style indeed. How old would you say this one? Five and more. Five years more? Yeah. Yeah. Cheers Tommy, that, that was so exciting mate, I'll tell you. <laughs> Got the old adrenaline buzzing there mate. Yeah. I just, uh, when he was walking there, I just see, see the ears uh, when he was uh, lying there. And this, it was just, uh, how much? 20 metres. I know, but when you said that, I thought you was looking, I'm looking like 80 <laughs> yeah, metres in front, I, I couldn't see, I couldn't see yeah. it sitting in there, it was only, you know, when we sort of yeah. just crept back a bit, right. and then you finally pointed out to me that I could see that it was just, just a big thing like this, yeah. under a few bunch of leaves, yeah. I couldn't believe it. So, when he, when, when he uh, goes across in front of us, yeah. I need to I need to see if, if he's the right one, Yeah. and then I tell you, come with the runner, yeah, yeah. please, and it, it was it was a nice shot. He he took uh, the shoulder. Out. Yeah. It was a sign that he's you know, deadly. Yeah, shot. I mean, because when it was when it was going across the track, yeah, you know, I, I was on it. I was, I was <laughs> waiting for that. I was waiting yeah. for that little nod to say yes. Yeah. You know, but obviously you had to make sure that it was the right one. Right. You know, so but obviously we, we, the end result is he, he's laying here. Yeah, I'm a happy chappy, mate. So well done. Two keepers abroad there, proving the worth at the wild boar. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News, with the CLA Game Fair just 15 weeks away. The Shooting Show reports live this week from EJ Churchill, where Ely Hawk held an exclusive event to give the press a chance to use Ely's new loads. The Amber, Rebel, VIP and Olympic Blues were all put to use around an 80-bird course at the Churchill's shooting ground. From high driving birds to crossers and left to right loopers, the course provided a varied array of targets to challenge the assembled journalists and to put the low recoil capabilities of the Amber and Rebel loads into practice. We followed the team from Clay Shooting Magazine as they loaded up and took on the Clays. A few early high scores were soon ruined by a tricky pair of long range rabbits. I think it's very common for people to believe that the faster a cartridge and the more recoil it produces then the more effective it is and that's absolutely not the case. With these monobase powders uh, produced by Maxam Group that have been used uh, in Ely cartridges you can get a fast burn, relatively low pressures and um, modest velocities as well. So the, um, the cartridges are plenty fast enough and, uh, and low recoiling as well. Then at the walk-up grouse stand, an oncoming target dropped rapidly and saw a lot of misses above. 
The course concluded with a final set of high birds testing the team, but they still had enough energy in them to take on the flurry. Three, two, one, pull. We've shot the uh, new Amber Hill cartridges this morning in shocking pink, and we've been shooting the Rebel in uh, an acid green case. Both are soft shooting cartridges. Uh, I'm shooting my Zoli today, which is relatively heavy, but there's no recoil uh, in a heavy competition gun. Dan has been shooting the 20 gauge cartridges in a pastel yellow, and um, the reports are that the pretty smooth shooting. So I've been shooting the 24 gram Ely Amber Load um, and I've shot over 100 targets today. My shoulder feels brilliant and so I think I'm going to go for another round. The gun room's Rob Hall has opened a second gun shop, the gun room 2 in Holman's Folding Moor, East Yorkshire. Stocking leading brands in guns, rifles, ammunition and clothing, it's a sure sign that gun trade confidence is high in East Yorkshire. Number one shop is at Moulton. Um, number two shop is down at Oman Spalding Moor, seven miles off the M62. Come down to the gun room for all your shooting requirements, all leading brands stocked. Come to the gun room. Entries are now open for the Fitas Classic, which takes place for the first time in 10 years this July. Sponsored by Troy Foods and Clay Shooting Magazine, the Fitas Classic extends the classic series that begins with the Sporting Classic in June. Already £20,000 worth of prizes are up for grabs, including Zolly shotguns and cash. To enter, visit the Clay Shooting website. Deer numbers are on the rise in Somerset after eight years of decline, according to the latest counts. The Quantock Deer Management and Conservation Group, which organises annual deer counts, said it had recorded 511 red deer. That's an increase of 125 on last year. A spokesman for the group said it was a relief to see this upturn, as no one wanted numbers to decline too far. More deer news in Sporting Rifle magazine. Shooting organisations are to meet a Conservative MP who has called for a statutory hare close season in Parliament. John Randall proposed a close season that began in February and ended in August, making it two months longer than the current voluntary close season. Basque said the extension would make February hare shoots impossible and said it would be meeting Mr Randall to work towards a practical solution. However, the GWCT said it welcomed the proposals. The US gun trade is buoyant, with the industry nearly doubling in size in the last five years. NSSF figures show that the firearms industry now contributes $37 billion to the US economy, up from $19 billion in 2008. That's the direct equivalent of more than 110,000 jobs. That was the Shooting Show News. Team Garrett has been called out on an emergency pigeon control mission. Hundreds of pigeons have been sighted dropping into the corner of an oilseed field and someone needs to deal with them. With Jeff busy on his capering duties, it's down to son Justin to take responsibility. Justin is an up-and-coming hotshot and this is the perfect opportunity to prove he can do the business as a lone gun. On arrival we get an idea of the size of this grey horde. Their numbers are astronomical and they will do some real damage if left unchecked. Justin wastes no time setting up behind the hide. Stoking up the Browning Maxis with Ely VIPs it's time to start filling the bag. As his dad famously says, it's easy with Ely, it's now time for Justin to prove himself. I can't resist bringing the camera along to document Justin's solo debut and it's not long before he rewards me with a cracking opening shot of the day. The first bird on the ground is soon followed by another. And another. With the woodies still amassing overhead, Justin senses a bumper deer. A single miss doesn't put him off and he soon gets another one on the ground. With a bird coming in and rising high over the pattern, Justin makes the most of the Browning semi-auto to bring it down.
Good lad. A pause to collect the fallen pigeons and Justin can't resist tweaking the pattern a little. He's just like his dad. Then it's back to some serious shooting. Justin has made a sizeable dent in the oversized pigeon population today, and I've certainly been impressed with his shooting prowess. So, first time solo without uh, your dad, you know, famous pigeon uh, guru. So, <laughs> what's it feel like to be uh, let loose on your own? Oh, it's um, it's great. You can trust me on my own or with yourself, and um, just be able to come out. I set my set my own hide up. It's just, it's just um, like. All the, time, all the time I've been with him, he obviously knows I can learn, I've learned from him. Yeah. And uh, it's good, and I've really enjoyed it. Well, yeah, it's been great watching you shoot well. Thank uh, you. Yeah, you know, fantastic. It's good to see that uh, someone else is coming into the sport that's going to carry it on into the future. Yeah. Thanks for having me along. With the day at an end, Justin has more than proved his worth as a pest controlling pro. And like a true son, he calls in Dad to help him with the less glorious task of packing up. Looks like you've had a good day, mate. How'd you get on? Yeah, we shot 74 all together. Yeah. So he knows exactly to the bird, Jeff, not like you, which uh, is, you know. Right. That's good, mate. Um, decoy all right? Yeah, it's got some coming lovely, got good puffs of feathers come out of them. Good boy, well so, done. Yeah. I could kill him. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was spot on, yeah, I can shoot. Yeah, yeah lovely, yeah. I mean, I, you know, obviously I know he's got it in him, so, uh, you know. It's all in the jeans, Jeff. Yeah, it certainly <laughs> is, mate, yeah. The old, um, I tell you, it looks like it's a perfect time to pack up. Looks like we've got some rain clouds coming up here, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, brilliant day of sunshine and the wind got up and clouds came in and it just was like turning the switch off, wasn't it? Mm, yeah. Yeah, the birds yeah. just stopped like that. Yeah, you've had a good day, so well done, mate. Well Ready done. for the pub and it's your round. Right, fair enough then. <laughs>